So for the for, uh, seventh example, we'll try to analyze an I-bar tension member. A 16 millimeter thick ASTM A36 I-bar member as shown carries a dead load of 105 kN and a live load of 70 kN in tension. The pin diameter is 75 millimeter. Verify the member tensile strength. So the diameter of the head is 190 millimeter. The radius of transition between the head and the body is 200 millimeter. And the thickness is 16 millimeter. So first, we will try to check for the dimensional requirement. So first requirement, the width of the body must be lesser than or equal to 8 times the thickness. So our thickness is equal to 16 millimeter. And the width of the body is 75 millimeter. Multiplying it, we have 128 millimeter and it is visible that 75 is lesser than 128 millimeter so the next requirement eyebrow shall be of uniform thickness without the enforcement of the pinholes and have circular heads with a periphery concentric with the pinhole so it has a uniform thickness the section or the member has uniform thickness and it has a circular head with the periphery concentric with the pinhole. So for the third one, that the radius of transition is greater than or equal to the diameter or the head diameter. So the radius of transition is 200 millimeter and the diameter head is 190 millimeter. So na satisfy niya. And for the last one, that the diameter or the pin diameter must be greater than or equal to the 7 8 of the width of the body. So, diameter is equal to 25 millimeter. Diameter of the pin. And the width is 75 millimeter. It would be equal to 65.625 So, ayan. Satisfy na naman niya. So, upon checking all of this uh, dimensional requirement, we can now proceed to I sorry. So, for the next one, that the uh, diameter and for the next one, that the pinhole diameter must be lesser than or equal to the pin diameter plus 1 millimeter. So our pin diameter is 75 millimeter plus 1. So 76 millimeter. Yeah. And satisfying. And for the next one, that the yield stress is lesser than or equal to our tensile strength. So, yield stress is 250 megapascal and our tensile strength, our tensile stress is 485 megapascal. So, okay So, for the next one. That the thickness must be greater than or equal to 13 millimeter. Unless external nuts are provided to it. To tighten pin plates and filler plates into a snug contact. So our thickness is 16 millimeter Yeah, satisfy niya. And then for the next one, that the 3 fourth of the width of the plate must be greater than or equal to the uh, edge distance. And it must be lesser than the two-third of 
Ricardo. And for the next one, and it would be now equal to 56.25 kN. And it is greater than 55 kN. So, substitute lang natin yung third third multiplied by 56.25. So, 56.25 is greater than 55 and 55 is greater than 50. After that, we can now proceed to the next step, which is by determining the required tensile strength. For the required tensile strength under LRFD, you multiply the factor 1.2 by the dead load and 1.6 with the life load. So it would be now equal to 126 plus 112, so it is around 238 kN. And for ESD, 105 plus 70. It would be now equal to 175 kilo newton. So for available tensile yielding strength, Our PN is equal to the yield stress multiplied by the gross area. And our gross area is, is multiplying the thickness by the width of the member. Our width of the body. So it is equal to 1,200 square millimeter. And multiplying it to 250 multiplied by 1, 2. So it would be equal to 300 kilonewton. So for LRFD, same process, the normal tensile stress or strength multiplied by the factor phi. It would be equal to 270 kN. And it is greater than our PU, which is only 238 kN. And for ASD, Pn must be divided to the safety factor phi, which is 1.67. So under ESD, it is equal to 179.64 and it is greater than our Pa. Now we can conclude that the section or the I bar member is adequate to carry the given load which is the live load and the dead load so for our last example we will consider plate with the staggered pots compute the net area and the effective net area for a 350 millimeter wide and 13 mm thick plate subject to tensile loading with staggered bolt or staggered holes as shown. So this is our plate. It has four holes with 21 mm in diameter with 20 mm diameter bolts. So we have the um, longitudinal spacing which is 60 mm and the transverse spacing with this following. So our first step is to determine the net hole diameter. Our net hole diameter, Dn, is equal to the nominal width of the bulk hole plus 2 millimeters. So 21 plus 2 would be equal to 23 millimeters. And next step is to determine the net width.
wherein the net width is equal to the total width minus the summation of the net width of the bulk pool plus the summation of the longitudinal spacing squared all over 4 multiplied by the transverse spacing. So we will consider different um, fracture planes. Where first one is line A, B, E, F. So the net width is just equal to 350 minus 2 multiplied by 23. So it is equal to 304 millimeter. Next line is the line A, B, C, D, E, F. So it is equal to 350 minus 4 multiplied by 23 plus 60 squared all over 4 multiplied by 75 plus 60 squared all over 4 multiplied by 75. So it is equal to 282 millimeter. Next uh, fractured line is the line A, B, C, D, and G. So it is equal to 350 minus uh, 3 multiplied by 23 plus 60 squared all over 4 multiplied by 75. So it is equal to 293 millimeters. Next is the line A, B, D, E to F. So it is equal to 350 minus 60, uh, 3 multiplied by 23 plus 60 squared divided by 4 times 75 plus 60 squared divided by 4 of 100 plus 75. So 175 plus 60 squared divided by 4 multiplied by 75. So it is equal to 286.14 millimeters. Uh, sorry. It's equal to 298.14 millimeters. Next one is the line A, B, C, E, and F. So 350 minus 3 times 23 plus 60 squared all over 4 times 75 plus 6. 60 squared divided by 4 multiplied by 175. So it is just the same with line A, B, D, E, F. Double check. So it is equal to 298.14 millimeters. And the last one is the line A, B, D, G. So it is equal to 350 minus 3. Plus 60 squared 4 multiplied by 175. So it is equal to 
309.14. So these are the different possible net weight. But according to NSCT 2015, we will consider the least net width. So our least net width is 282 millimeters. So our next step is to determine the net area. The net area is just the product of the net width and the thickness of the plate. So our net width is 200. 82 millimeters multiplied by the thickness which is 13 millimeters so it is equal to 3,666 square millimeter so in finding the effective area we will just multiply the net area by a certain shear lag factor and opening your NSCP 2015 under case 1, tension load is transmitted to all elements by the fasteners. We will consider U as 1.0. So multiplying it by our net area, we can derive that the effective net area is also equal to 3,666 square millimeter.